Good evening, pen people. Today I'm going to review for you the Franklin Kristoff Model 2. Uh, this one is equipped with a fine SIG Yovo nib. SIG stands for the Stub Italic Gradient. This is a great pen. Let's just get right to the writing sample. As I said today, we're writing with a Franklin Kristoff. Model 2. As you can see, this ink flow is pretty consistent. Uh, works every time, all the time. Uh, very good writer. I really like this pen. Uh, the nib is a fine stub italic gradient. Uh, the ink. Sailor Kiwagudo and the paper is of course Rodia yep. camera stays focused here all right so this is a this is a really nice pen uh, so let's get on to a problem here oops Wrong way. Just getting used to the camera here. I'm going to switch to uh, just lettering to give you a taste for all of the various kinds of possibilities. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this double integral and we're going to change it to uh, polar coordinates and we're going to evaluate. First, let's draw a picture of the situation. All right. All right, so we're going to graph y equals x. And I'm going to graph this x equals root uh, 9 minus y squared. And if you rewrite this, uh, so if I were to write x equals root 9y, uh, 9 minus y squared, okay, so we can rewrite it as x squared plus y squared equals 9, which is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 3. So let me sketch a, what I can of a segment of a circle here. All right, so now the x's are going from y out to root 9, uh, sorry, the square root of 9 minus y squared. So these are the x's. And the y is going to probably about that point, but we're going to verify that in a second. Uh, so let's see. Also, you want to notice that this uh, y equals x line corresponds to a theta value of pi over 4. So we can write our bounds for the thetas. And if I look at that shaded area, uh, when I integrate with respect to r, it's going to go from 0 out to 3. So these are going to be our limits uh, for theta and r. All right, so let's just check that this is the right place. So if I plug in um, root, uh, 3 over root 2 for y here, Get the square root of nine minus nine over two, uh, but nine over nine minus nine over two is uh, surely nine over two. So this is again root three. Uh, sorry, nine over two, or since it's the square root of uh, three, hmm. three over root two. All right, so this is the right. This is the right place. 
So that we have our bounds for theta and r, uh, we can translate our integral. So let's write it. Theta is going from zero to pi over four, r is going from zero to three. Uh, we have to use our change variables. So let's remind ourselves what those are. So x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. Uh, so I'm changing y up here. I'm going to replace it with r sine theta. And uh, when doing polar integration, or at least translating, I have to multiply by the r term. And this is going to be dr d theta. Okay, so let's write here. Uh, let's just rewrite this integral as r squared uh, sine theta dr d theta. Okay, so I integrate with respect to r. r cubed over 3 sine theta. And this is for r values between 0 and 3. Uh, so 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3 is going to be 9. So this is going to be, and if I plug in 0, I get 0. So this is uh, 0 to pi over 4, uh, 9 sine theta. Uh, d theta. Now I'm integrating with respect to theta. Great, so negative cosine theta, and we're evaluating from 0 to pi over 4. So cosine at pi over 4 is uh, root 2 over 2. And cosine at 0 is 1. So in the end, this is 9 minus 9 root 2 over 2. And that's the interval. Hope you enjoyed this.